Hello everyone and welcome back to Fan Interference with Wichita Wingnuts manager Pete Rose Jr. Fan Interference is a weekly program that gives you the fans the opportunity to pose your questions and comments to the Wingnuts manager about the team, baseball or shorts in general, or just seek Pete's wisdom about life events that are going on. In this week's episode, Pete talks to us about the retirement of his dad's jersey by the Reds. He shares with us his insights about his team, and Pete talks to us about those players who are snoring on long bus rides. Let's get right to fan interference. So let us welcome back manager Pete Rose Jr. Pete, let's first of all begin with team updates you have for us. Uh, team updates, uh, Matt Chavez came back off the inactive. Uh, he's getting back going. Uh, uh, Ryan Kusmal got signed by the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, so we're very happy for him. Um, you know, you hate to lose a guy like him, but you're happy for him to get uh, get a chance to go start an affiliated ball. Uh, we signed uh, local kid Garrett, Garrett Gold, GG, uh, I guess he was at the Dodgers, uh, local Wichita kid coming off Tommy John, I think he had pitched in a couple years. Uh, pitched the other night in Joplin, did really well. Um, other than that, we're just uh, moving along. I mean, we're just uh, slowly but sure. Uh, Tyler Earps, we, we traded him to uh, Lincoln, you know, give Tyler a chance to go play every day, uh, get some at-bats. Great kid. Um, you know, really won any, uh, really won get many at bats here, and you know, we want him to get every chance uh, there is possible to go play, and um, he's going to play in Lincoln, so we're very happy for him. And um, you know, one day uh, here in the new, near future, we'd love to have him back. He's just a, he's a great, great, great baseball player, even better kid, and um, you know, just uh, happy for you know somebody give him a chance to go play every day. I think he's going to do a, a, an outstanding job for Lincoln. Before we head into our fan questions this week, I just wanted to ha- give you the opportunity to talk about your dad's having his jersey retired in Cincinnati last, uh, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before, and tell us a little bit about what that was like. Um, you know, like I said, it, it, really, you can't put it in the words. I mean, you're still on cloud nine, and, uh, you know, you see your dad floating around, and um, it was good that the 76 reunion team was there, and he got to spend it, uh, you know, he got to share that with his teammates. They had a big gala on uh, Sunday night, and um, just uh, first class. Uh, you know, event put on by the Reds and um, definitely well overdue and deserved. And um, it was just great for, you know, to see him kind of just be in his element and get his number retired. And, you know, I had to throw the first pitch out on Sunday. He wouldn't let me throw from the mound, so I caught a lot of crap on my guys here. But <laughs> we'll talk about that in another show. But uh, it was good. I mean, it was good for Dad and good for our family. And uh, just, um, you know, first-class event by the Reds. I mean, you can't thank, uh, you know, the people in Cincinnati – you know, the organization, but, you know, the fans as well. You can't thank them enough. Just uh, unbelievable. Awesome. Well, let us head to our fan questions this week. The first one we have is from Mary from Andover, who says, how much of this do you see as a reflection of your own personality, the team itself? Um, you know, I don't uh, – maybe a little, maybe none. I don't know. We just show up on time and play hard. I mean, I don't really think it's a reflection. Um, you know, like I've told you before, I just try to stay out of the way of these guys and just let them go out and play. But, uh, you know, they're, uh, they, they, they're themselves and, and they have fun. And, um, you know, if it's anywhere, you know, they, I would have loved to play the game with them. Let's just put it that way. So if you want to call that a reflection, you can call it that. But I would give anything to play with all these guys that I have on my team here. I think it would be an honor to play with them. Next, we have Tina from Wichita who has a statement she'd just like to say. She says, Pete, just wanted to say that it is so great to see that the winning tradition will continue for the Wichita Wingnuts thanks to you. Keep up the good work. Uh, thank you, but uh, tell her every, t- every chance she can get to go up and thank uh, all these guys in the locker room. They're the one that's doing it. They're the one that's going out there and playing, and um, we're just kind of writing the lineup up and letting them go do their thing. But uh, tell, uh, I appreciate it, but uh, we'll let these guys keep doing what they're doing, and we'll see what happens here at the, uh, you know, the end of the season. I did want to say, Pete, that she had a lot of X's and O's at the end of her statement, but I didn't want to include those in because you might have thought I was putting them in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. No worries, man. No worries. Next is Joe from El Dorado, who says, Boy, Brett Cleveland has been on a tear. What do you think has really got him rolling? Do you see him as winning the American Association MVP? Uh, I just think Brent Cleveland is just being Brent Cleveland. I think if you look on the back of his baseball card, uh, you'll see what uh, what he's all about. I mean, he's just uh, – um, he can hit, he can play. He's a baseball player, obviously, playing the big leagues. Um, you know, just maybe got off to a little – Little, little, you know, not as quick as star as he wanted to, but uh, he's going to hit. Uh, do I think he's uh, the best parent player in the league? I mean, uh, I'm, he's got to, he's got to be one of them. And I'm just, let's just say, I'm glad he's on my team. I'm glad he hit third for me, and um, he does a lot for your team, not only on the field but off the field as well. But uh, you know, I think if he keeps being himself, which I'm sure he will, I think he has a really good chance at that. But 
um, you know, I don't think he's all about that. I think he's all about win, you know, winning and, you know, playing for his teammates. And, and I think when he does, I think everything will fall into place. But, uh, you know, you talk about one heck of a player. I mean, that's Brent Cleveland. I mean, he's just, uh, steady Eddie, man. He just, uh, you know, doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low, doesn't really show much of emotion. And, um, you know, I know a lot of our guys, if not all of them, look up to him and he'd be, a, you know, he's a great guy to look up to. Robert from Hutchinson asks, there are a lot of guys that people seem to be excited about with your team, but Richard Prigatano seems to be the guy that really no one is getting really talking about. He could be the MVP of your team, don't you think? Um, definitely. I think uh, not only him, I think everybody can. Um, you know, it's a different guy every night, uh, whether it's on the offensive end or the defensive end or the pitching end. Um, but, yes, I mean, Prig's having a good year. Uh, he's swinging the bat well. He plays hard. Uh, he's big. He's fast. Uh, I'm a little surprised that he's here, actually. I think he should be an affiliated. No two ways around it, especially considering his age. You know, I think he played one year with the Rockies. But, uh, you know, he's just going to keep working hard and keep doing his thing and, um, you know, not worry about all these stuff that he can't worry about. But, uh, yes, he could definitely be one uh, as long as, uh, you know, as well as a lot of other guys. I mean, I think uh, it's been a total team effort up to this point. But, uh, you know, Rich is having uh, one heck of a year, and he's just going to continue to get better. And then I'll tell you, people don't want to give him credit, but he plays hard. And, and it's a joy to go out and watch and uh, just the team get better on a, on a daily basis. And, you know, I know Cleve's helped him a lot. TJ's helped him a lot. And, you know, he's kind of taken a lead with these older guys and kind of watched and paid attention and uh, kind of went from there. Manny from Colwich would like to know, would you say your team is built for playoff baseball? Um, I think we're built to play day in and day out, whether it's playoff baseball or regular season baseball. I just think we're built to play baseball. I don't really think that it's, it really matters with – uh, if it's in playoff mode or regular season mode or uh, whatever mode, we're just uh, we just come to the ballpark early and and we'll be ready to go at seven to five or one thirty or whatever time the game is, and we'll just go out and play. Uh, whether it's in September, August, July, you know, it doesn't really matter with these guys. They just like come to the ballpark and playing ball. Otis from Wichita says, "Isn't it great to have Matt Chavez back?" Uh, definitely. I mean, you, you, this this kid is. Uh, you know, you, you watch him and, and you, you just kind of scratch your head on, you know, why he's even uh, – we haven't even had the chance of having him here at Wichita. I mean, I think he's hit 30, 30 homers in a season, and, uh, you know, he's got gorilla pop. I mean, when you watch him take batting practice, and, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's special. But uh, definitely happy to have him back. Um, you know, he uh, started swinging the bat right before he went down and, you know, kind of picked it up right where you left off when he came back. and. Um, we're definitely happy to have him back. He's a big part of our offense, and we can stick a guy like that, you know, in the middle of your lineup, you're just going to be better. So, yes, definitely happy to have Matt back. Next up, we have Ian from St. Paul. He says, what do you say to players when they return to the dugout after doing something really stupid? Uh, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, it's, um, you know, I think if, if you can, if you can teach, you know, take a teach a moment, I mean, Listen, if it's an aggressive mistake, you know, we're all going to make aggressive mistakes. You just hope it's not a stupid mistake if it's uh, making the first or third out of third or running into an out or something like that. But, you know, you got to realize something. We're going to make mistakes. We're human. That's kind of how the game of baseball is. And, um, you know, just learn from it and, and just stay positive about it because, you know, last time I checked, uh, nobody's never not made a mistake in a game of baseball. So uh, why should we be the team that never makes a mistake? I mean, they're young. They're aggressive. Uh, keep being young. Keep being aggressive. And, you know, we make mistakes, we make mistakes, but, you know, you try to teach and, and uh, you know, correct it so maybe the next time they can understand, you know, why not to do it. But, um, you know, as long as they're being aggressive, go ahead and keep, you know, keep making mistakes because I think if you're aggressive, good things are going to happen. And, you know, I think if you understand that you're going to make mistakes, you know, then you don't play timid, you don't play scared. I mean, go out and make mistakes as long as they're aggressive. But uh, you just try to stay positive and just, uh, you know, just keep, you know, tell them what they're doing, you know, what happened, situation, explain to them, and then kind of move on. Tim from Lions asks of you, what has been your favorite ballpark in the American Association so far? Um, I'll tell you, I, you'd be honest with you, I, I really enjoy, I don't enjoy the bus ride, but I, I enjoy I enjoy everything about Laredo. I thought it was, uh, the hotel was gorgeous, the, the ballpark was gorgeous. Um, you know, of course, excluding our ballpark here in Wichita, which, you know, it, it was funny because when I went back for my dad's weekend, a lot of the former players say, hey, you're, you're in Wichita. Is it still Lawrence Dumont? Yep. And it's just got a lot of history and, um, you know, everything. But, you know, ex excluding our ballpark, obviously, um, you know, without the 14-hour bus ride down there for three games and back, uh, Laredo's actually a really nice place. I mean, the surface was nice. Um, the clubhouse was great. Uh, the ballpark's great. Um, you know, the every you know, places to eat, the hotel, 
um, everything. So I would have to say that's probably been my favorite, um, you know, so far. I mean, I've been to I've been to all of them. I don't get me wrong. I love Winnipeg. I played there obviously, and I'm sure I'm going to love St. Paul being the new downtown one. But I haven't been there yet. So uh, we're getting ready to go to Gary on another lovely 10 hour ride for four games, and then back here. So um, you know, that's not a bad ballpark. But I'd have to say Laredo up to this point. It's too bad they don't give away frequent bus miles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then we can maybe trade them in for uh, maybe that cheap flight down to Laredo. You know what I mean? But you're exactly right. We'll have to look into that. <laughs> Next is Brew from Wichita. He says, Pete, I am sorry to ask about the elephant in the room, but how do you view your dad's situation, and do you think he will get into the Hall of Fame? Um, elephant. I don't really see an elephant, but you're asking a, a rose a question about a rose. I mean, obviously it's not a Hall of Fame if, if, if he's not in there. Do I think he's going to get in? Um, probably, but I don't think he's going to be around to enjoy it. But, uh, you know, I was glad they gave an answer, either yes or no, and now he can kind of not stress out about it and just kind of live his life. But, uh, you know, like I said this a uh, couple weekends ago, and I'll, and I'll say it, it's, just, it's more important for us and our family and, and our city and the people in our city to have him in um, our Hall of Fame in Cincinnati because that's home and that's where he's from. That's where he grew up. Uh, that's where I live. That's where I was born. That's where I'll die. Uh, family's there. So I, I, I'm, I'm just glad he's in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame and, um, you know, if they want to make the real Hall of Fame a real Hall of Fame, then they'll put him in. If not, then we're okay with it. We can just go down, uh, go downtown, and, and look at all the stuff in the in the Reds Hall of Fame. So, um, you know, I think he should be in. I think every baseball player thinks he should be in. Um, if you don't, I think you're trying to be uh, politically correct. But uh, we, we won't worry about it. We'll, we'll stick with the Reds Hall of Fame. That's good enough for us. And um, we're just glad he's uh, he's back at home where he belongs. Airman Mike from McConnell Air Force Base asks, how do you gauge when you are working with your child's arm that you're not doing too much that it causes pain versus soreness? What's the difference between that? Um, you know, I just think if they're little, um, I don't really think any little kid knows what a sore arm is. I think it's usually just the dead arm and his bicep. I mean, if it hurts in his bicep, it, it's just basically dead arm. It's just, you know, you just throw through it. But I, I just go back to when I was a kid. I never got a sore arm, and I think I threw from morning till night without stopping. But, uh, you know, if it's in the elbow or in the shoulder type of deal, you know, I think maybe you, you might want to go get it checked out or something. But if it's just a bicep, just kind of dead arm stuff, um, you know, I think that's kind of, it's kind of dead arm. But uh, I think the more you throw, the better off you're going to be. I just remember me being a kid. I didn't really worry about throwing too much or not enough. I just went out and kind of threw it. And whatever kind of happened, happened. But I guess that's uh, the age we're in. But, uh, you know, if it's the elbow or shoulder, you know, you might want to back off a little bit. But if it's just kind of that uh, – dead arm in the bicep and i know that probably hurts more than the elbow and the shoulder um you know you just kind of throw through it but uh you know just each kid's different and i think uh you know being parents you kind of know what your you know what your son's telling you your daughter's telling you and you kind of know if it's serious or not so just kind of just pay attention to it gina from derby would like to know what do you say to players who are in a slump say it again robert I, 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 gina from derby would like to know what do you say to players who are in a slump um, first and foremost, you tell them that the, the word that you just said never comes out of anybody's mouth because once you say that, then that's what's going to happen. And I think if you can trick your brain into, you know, if you're over 20 and somebody asks you, you know, how you swing it, man, I feel great. I'm just not getting any hits as opposed to, man, I'm slumping. Well, you're just going to keep slumping and, and, and just kind of go in a downward spiral. So I think if you can be headstrong and stay positive and kind of trick your brain sometimes to telling yourself that you feel great and, uh, you know, you're seeing the ball and you're hitting the ball and you're just not getting any hits, I think it's, uh, you know, you'll come out of it a lot quicker. But I think, you know, the more you talk about it, when you talk about slumps and everything else, you shouldn't really talk about it. But, you know, you got to understand you're going to make more outs than you are, uh, you know, get base hits. So if you can understand that, and it's just kind of how, all, uh, you know, how you recover from it. But never say the word slump. I would just say, you know, you feel great. You're just not getting any hits. So just try not to say slump ever. Uh, at least I don't try to say it at all. Is this a situation where you're more concerned about a player – if they're if they're getting good at bats, so they're hitting the ball hard, it's just being caught all the time. Then you're not really worried about it at all. No, I mean that's that's the thing. If you just you know you're going to make outs, and then the thing is is you know you're going to hit the ball soft, you're going to hit the ball hard, and, you're, and they're still going to catch it. You're going to hit it hard, you get base hits, you're going to hit it soft. It's just it's kind of part of the game. But once you start talking about slumps, you know now that crosses into your brain. Now you start thinking about it. And now you start trying to do this, starting to try to do that. Now you go oh, for six. Now everything is not. Now you're beat. I think if you know, my dad always used to say, if you can trick your brain into telling yourself that you feel good when you don't, you're seeing the ball when you can't. 
um, you know, you're hitting it good when you're not. I think when you start tricking your brain, um, you know, those 0 for 20s will only be like maybe 0 for 6 or 7 just because you're so positive. And, you know, I tell my guys, if you strike out four times, make them be the four best strikeouts you ever had. I mean, it's always try to take something positive from the game because if you start taking negative stuff, then it's going to carry over to the next game and then everything starts to downhill spiral from there. And, and how do I know I've been in them? And I can, you know, this is from experience. If I could have, you know, only listened to what my dad had said, and maybe I wouldn't have been in as many slumps as I was uh, just by just staying positive and just, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, kind of tricking your brain into thinking that you're doing something that you're not because once you do that, you're not going to go into it. You're just going to pick up right where you left off. Starting in our main questions for this week, uh, Lynn, <laughs> Lynn from All Laugh asks, can we get a weekly update on things you have done to annoy Josh Robertson? I bet that would be fun. Uh... Man, it's funny because he, he just walked in here just before. Um, we, I'm trying to think. We see it. It hasn't been a while because I, I, you know, we we went to Laredo, we came back, and I went to Cincinnati and came back, and now we're getting ready to go on the road again. So um, I, I've been kind of tame this month. I haven't seen him a lot, and I think maybe he, he's trying to avoid me. But uh, I'm sure something will something will, will, will pop, you know pop up. I haven't been down to his office in a while, uh, you know. So that's kind of uh, it may be taking me a little bit of time to kind of get down there and mess things up, but uh, it's been kind of quiet on the quiet front right now, but we'll we'll try to make some things happen when we get back from Gary. <laughs> Travis from Wichita would like to know, I would like to know, Pete, which is harder, hitting a 98-mile-an-hour fastball or getting Josh Robertson to smile? Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a great question. Um, getting Josh to smile is a piece of cake, so I would say uh, hitting a 98-mile-an-hour fastball is harder than that because I can just – you know, you could just you make a noise or something, and Josh will laugh or just go up and grab him or bite him on the neck or something from behind or something like that. But I, I would definitely say hitting a 98-mile-an-hour fastball is harder than getting him to smile. That's easy. Ken from Jefferson City would like to know what it's like to play in an all-star game. Um, it's You know, I think it's, it's, um, it's a lot of fun, and, and I think if you, take it, if you take it like a normal game and, and you play it like a normal game, but it's, it's an honor because you get to play with your peers and um, – you know, it's uh, it, it's it's weird because leading up to the game, it, it's all different, and you kind of get nervous, get some butterflies. But once the first pitch is kind of thrown, it's just a game. It's just kind of like a playoff game. It's like a World Series game um, to where you've played so many of them. You know, you're just basically playing the game. But I think leading up to it, you know, all the all-star festivities, getting called out to the line, uh, lockering with different guys. I mean, that's all. That's great stuff because you meet people that you normally not going to meet. But once you play in the game, once the game starts, it just kind of – um, it's just kind of the game. You just play it just like you do any normal game. Next up, we have Michelle from Wichita who says, Pete, my child's teacher this past year told her that just because her dad is in the military does not make him a hero. My friend said I shouldn't be upset about that. I have a right to be mad, don't I? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, I think um, I think all dads are heroes. I mean, I don't care if they're in uh, whatever line of work they are. I mean, I, my dad's mine. I mean, that's just kind of being, uh, that's just kind of, you know, I think every kid's hero is their dad first and foremost, and I think then they kind of go from there. But, uh, hey, you, you're a parent. You have every right to do whatever you want to do. But, absolutely, I think, I think you know, every, I think all dads and all moms are, are heroes to their, to their kids. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm on her side. I think she's got every right. Keep You know, don't ever change that. When you start changing that, then everything else happens. So, um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely be it. You can be as mad as you want. But, you know, hey, it, it's uh, last time I checked, we're in America, and, you know, any uh, any person could be a hero. It depends on who uh, who your kid or who your son or daughter wants to be a hero, and it's usually mom or dad or uh, you know the Stephen Curry's or Kobe Bryant's or LeBron James. But uh, you know, it's uh, mine was my dad, so uh, I'm on her side 100 percent, absolutely. Luke from Wichita would like to know. I'm trying to think which would be worse for you: a hundred degree day on a turf at Lawrence Dumont Stadium, or having to talk to Rob each week. Which would you say? Uh, having to talk to who? <laughs> to me. Oh, uh, definitely sitting uh, on the turf at, uh, at Lawrence Dumont at about 115. But I'll even go one further. I think sitting on a bus from Laredo when the uh, for 14 hours and then the air condition goes out at about 7 in the morning on the way back and getting in at uh, 1.30, I would say that would be worse than sitting here at Lawrence Dumont because at least you got to breathe. But uh, this is easy, Rob. This, this is a piece of cake. I enjoy doing this once a week. This is where, you know, this is a piece of cake. Plus, you get to be inside. You get to have a water or something, and it's air-conditioned. So definitely Lawrence Dumont at 100, 100, 100 degrees. That's definitely worse. I told you it was a mean crowd this week. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
Our last question for this week is from Barb from Wichita. She says, are there people on the bus that snore and keep you awake? Um, yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got, you got to remember something when it's just like being in, in somebody's house. I mean, once we're sleeping, we're sleeping, but, uh, you always have a, a few guys that'll snore, you know, they'll do all the, you know, some guys won't sleep. I'm a guy that really doesn't sleep, especially if we don't have a sleeper, if we have a regular bus, you know, I won't sleep maybe about 10, 15, 20 minutes, but, uh, you know, there's always something that goes on, but you know, we got a good group of guys to where, you know, I think once, uh, you know, once it gets kind of late, everybody will kind of settle down. And, you know, I'm a, I'm not the guy, listen, if a guy don't want to sleep, I'm not going to make him be quiet or anything else. I mean, but, you know, we just got good kids on here. But, yeah, there's definitely guys that snore, definitely guys that stay up, definitely guys that do crazy stuff on the bus that will keep you up. But uh, I think that's just part of the fun, and that's just part of being a ball club. Excellent. Thanks for joining us this week, Pete. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you next week. We want to thank manager Pete Rolls, Jr. for joining us on Fan Interference this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the Wichita Wingnut Skipper, please send them to us at AskPete at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. That's AskPete at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. Please have your questions to us by Saturday evening so we can give the Skipper a little time to review those questions before we record the show. I want to thank you for joining us this week. I'm Ron Pinier, the Managing Editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we'll see you next time on Fan Interference.